spread across the continent of Africa, you'll see traces of ancient civilization where great kings and queens reigned. Africa today is divided in 54 independent countries that share over 2,000 tribes, making it the most ethnically diverse continent on earth. Hello besties and welcome to another video on African history, perceptions and culture. Ever wondered what would happen if someone came and partitioned your land without permission or consideration of its people? The results would most probably be a creation of countless borders which will essentially divide two or more places and artificially joining them to others, forcing people to adapt to conditions they are not really used to. This scenario is a typical example of the single most destructive event in African history that happened in 1885 which we can argue to have contributed to the formation of various tribes we know today. The diversity we have in Africa in itself is not necessarily a bad thing because tribal identity is what makes the beauty of Africa. But we cannot ignore the fact that not recognizing that our diversity is our unity this is essentially what will cripple Africa. The true history of Africa is mostly overshadowed by that of colonialization, forgetting that Africa before then had an organized political systems, religion and alliance overseen by its kingdoms, empires and states. The scramble for Africa motivated Western nations to carve out pre-existing map of African kingdoms which was blessed with real treasures, kings and queens this world desires. It is a continent where people grouped according to their heritage and ancestry and in ancient Africa there was no Namibia, Tanzania, Nigeria, this is how it looked like, a continent of Himbas, Yoruba, Buganda, Bakongo people amongst others. This video is meant to educate a broader audience about the existing problem and negative stereotypes about tribes in Africa and we cannot help but envision Africa beyond tribes. So let's take it a bit further. The ancient kingdom of Aksum, Mali, Songhai, Mwenomotapa in Great Zimbabwe, the Ashanti kingdom and the kingdoms of the Zulu people, we can see how ethical identity has led to unity amongst its people. Africa today is challenged by division along tribal lines. We also saw how the partitioning of ethical homelands in countries such as Angola had led to the rise of secessionist groups and in Namibia where the previous trip quadri points resulted in a disconnect between people. The imposed arbitrary borders created artificial barriers separating people who essentially shared similar ancestry, creating a split, this split creating subgroups, and of course, resulting in mismatched groups with a reinforced tribal identity. Well, what if we reimagine a tribeless Africa what would it mean? 
Reimagining a tribeless Africa would mean group consciousness bonds its people in the spirit of Ubuntu, motivated by pan-Africanism. The desire to inspire and foster unity amongst Africans should not only be a fantasy, but a reality. For when we are united and see beyond tribal orientation, only then can we truly become one. This is what is most likely to have happened. For starters, Africa will continue to be so diverse, hosting a myriad of people who speak at least one or more native languages, a situation similar to South Africa where there are 11 officially recognized African languages. English, French, and Portuguese, which is understood by some Africans as lingua franca today, would most likely not have gained prominence since those are languages introduced in Africa at the dawn of colonialization. Ancient African kingdoms, empires, and states would have continued to expand into one or more African language families understood by many of its people across the continent. This would have inspired a strong African identity because of a shared common ancestry, culture, and linguistics. Africa would have most likely embraced African spirituality and belief systems with little influence. So we can still tell this from the number of ethnical groups who've managed to still uphold their African spirituality and belief systems. Most of these people, such as the Himbas found in southern Angola and western Namibia, the Maasai found between Kenya and Tanzania, the Sun found in eastern Namibia and western Botswana, as well as the Pygmies found in Central Africa, continue to face negative stereotypes. Although there are some places where peace and stability is a challenge in Africa, our progress in achieving African unity must be fueled by a collective effort, both leadership and its people. Though we embrace our diversity, given the sheer number of tribes we have, unity is our solution to most of our inherent neocolonialization dogma. On a deeper level, someone once made this statement. The world fears a united Africa. It had me thinking. What about you? Let us know in the comments what you think about this. Today we invite you to bridge a gap Change your perspective about African unity. Own your vision of a brighter Africa. And reimagine a tribeless Africa. If you like informative and educational videos on Namibia, where I'm from, and Africa in general, be sure to subscribe with post notifications on. This has been Becky from Sizzle's Diaries. Goodbye, besties.